Hello everybody, today we are going to learn simultaneous equations using the substitution method. Now, before we look at how to solve simultaneous equations, right, we need to know that for all simultaneous equations, we need to create a subject equation first. Okay, So you must know what is the meaning of a subject equation before we can start solving simultaneous equation using substitution method. And once you have created a subject equation, then the next thing that we want to be interested in will be to know how to use the subject equation inside the other equation that we are given and use solve them simultaneously to find the answers for x and y. Right? So these are the success criteria uh, for us to take note of when we want to solve simultaneous equations using substitution method. Okay, now. What is a subject equation? So take a look at some of the examples over here. Okay, so for a subject equation, right, it has to be an equation whereby a variable is in isolation. So if you look at the first equation, right, this first equation, what is in isolation? The y is in isolation. Okay, second equation, which one is in isolation? The x is in isolation. Okay, third equation, p is in isolation. And for this last one, x is in isolation, right? So as long as an equation is in this format, then it is called a subject equation. Are we clear about this? All right, let's take a look at an example. Let's say I want to choose a subject equation, all right? Uh, look at equation one. Is x and y in isolation? No, right? Look at equation two. Are uh, x and y in isolation? No, right? Okay, so because there are no subject equations in equation 1 and equation 2, we need to create an equ uh, a subject equation. So let's say I make use of equation 2 to create a subject equation. What will happen? Okay, so from equation 2, okay, I'll bring negative y over to the right hand side. So when I bring it over to the right hand side, negative y will become plus y. Okay, I'll end up with x equals to 5 plus y okay i'll label this as equation three okay so using this equation three i will now need to substitute into the other equation okay because if i don't substitute into the other equation and i substitute this back inside equation two i'll end up with zero equals to zero then this will not have any meanings right so let's substitute equation three into equation one how do i do that okay what i need to do now is i need to remove x from my equation one okay and after I remove x from equation 1, I'll replace 5 plus y inside equation 1. This is the meaning of substitution. So let's do that now. Okay, substitute x uh, equation 3 into equation 1. Okay, so I'll have 5 plus y plus y equals to 7. Okay, so this will be the equation that I'm interested in. Now, we will isolate the two y's on the left side and we'll bring the numbers to the other side. So y plus y, I'll end up with 2y. Okay, and when I bring 5 over to the other side, positive 5 becomes negative 5. Okay, so 2y will be equals to 2, y will be equals to 1. Right, so we have solved for y. Okay, right now we need to solve for another answer. And that is to find out the answer for x. Now to solve for x, we can substitute into equation 1, equation 2, or equation 3. Okay, But the fastest way to find your answer for x is to substitute into the third equation, your subject equation. This will give you the fastest way to obtain your answer. So let's do that now. Substitute y equals to 1 into equation 3. Right? Let me just erase off this thing first. All right. So when we substitute our values now, we will replace y with a value of 1. Okay, so x will be equals to 5 plus 1. And this will give us a value of 6. All right. So do you understand how to do this question now? Alright, let's take a look at the second example now. So for these two equations, okay. Let's look at the first equation. For equation number one, are x and y in isolation? No, right? 
uh, x and y in isolation for the second equation? Also no, right? So we do not have any subject equations for equation 1 and equation 2. What we need to do now is we need to create a subject equation, right? Then the next question is, which variable will I choose to make the subject for the equations? Okay, usually we will actually choose a variable where this co the coefficient is 1. So in this case, which equation has a variable which has coefficient 1? Okay, it will be coming from y. And hence, therefore, we will use equation 2 to create our subject equation. Right? Well, it's not... Uh, well, it's also possible to use equation 1 to create our subject equation. We'll end up with a fraction, which will not be advisable to use as a subject equation. Alright, so now we will use equation 2 as our subject equation. So from equation 2, y will be equals to negative 4. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll shift 3x to the right hand side. So positive 3x will become negative 3x minus 3x. Okay, we'll label this as equation 3. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to substitute equation 3 into equation 1. And how do I do that? I will remove y from equation 1 and I'll replace it with negative 4 minus 4 3x into equation 1. Uh, so we'll take out y and we'll put in negative 4 minus 3x. Okay, so sub equation 3 into equation 1. Okay, so when I do this, I will have 2x minus 7 bracket negative 4 minus 3x. Okay, take note of the brackets. It's important to have the brackets because if you do not have the brackets, then you're just... Uh, multiplying by negative 4 or just multiplying by some weird numbers which doesn't make sense so it's important to have your brackets there to represent multiplication e equals to 5 okay now i expand my brackets so 2x plus 28 plus 21x is equals to 5 okay what i need to do now is i need to consolidate the x together on the left side and I need to consolidate the numbers over to the right side. So 2x plus 21x gives me 23x. Okay, and when I bring 28 over to the right hand side, it becomes minus 28. So 5 minus 28. All right, okay, we continue over to the other side. So now I will simplify it. 23x, sorry. So 23x will be equals to negative 23x will be equals to negative 1. Okay, so once we have found the value of x, we need to find the value of y. And we have already discussed in the earlier example, in order to find the fastest way to find the value of y, we will replace x into the subject equation, which is equation 3. So now we'll do that. So y will be equals to negative 4 minus 3 times negative 1. Okay, and you'll get negative 1. So do you know how to do this question already? <laughs>